Energy use grows faster than our computer's performance. Every new model of artificial intelligence needs more electricity, larger data centers, and more complex chips. For a long time, we believed that the path to higher performance mainly led through smaller and more precise transistors. But is that really the only option? Scientists and technological startups worldwide are beginning to test a new class of devices called thermodynamic chips. While today's processors do everything to be precise and predictable, this chip relies on randomness, and thanks to it, it can be more efficient than classic architectures. How is it possible that a chip based on chaos can be smarter than the most modern processors? And can thermodynamic chips solve the energy crisis that is currently hindering the development of artificial intelligence? Let's learn more about it. Today's processors and graphics cards are designed to be as accurate and predictable as possible. A bit is either a zero or a one. Any random fluctuation, overheating, or noise presents a problem. That's why we put so much effort into cooling, manufacturing precision, and complex error correction. However, modern artificial intelligence actually operates with randomness constantly. During the training of neural networks, random initializations, random data selections, and random disabling of network parts are employed. Generative models select from many options the next most probable, but today we mostly just simulate randomness on computer chips, which were originally designed specifically to ensure that no randomness would ever occur. A thermodynamic chip, however, approaches this in a completely opposite way. It makes use of the actual physical noise that naturally occurs within electronic circuits. Inside, there are not merely fixed ones and zeros, but rather elements capable of switching between both states with a certain degree of probability. When we define how they should be connected and what problem conditions they must respect, the entire system will eventually settle into states that correspond to the solution. Simply put, instead of a long series of steps, we let physics itself do the work. Heat and the random movement of particles help find the correct answers. A significant difference from quantum computers is that thermodynamic chips operate in a normal environment. They do not require extreme cooling or isolation. They do not utilize fragile quantum states, but rather common physical processes already present in the circuits. Quantum computers target very specific types of tasks and are currently mostly in laboratories. Thermodynamic chips, on the other hand, are meant to be practical hardware assistants, specialized chips that can be inserted into a server alongside today's CPUs and GPUs and take over some of the work where probability is useful. Technology companies and scientific teams are already working on the development of these chips. Startup Normal Computing announced the development of CN101 chips, which are designed for tasks typical of artificial intelligence, matrix operations, statistical computations, and probabilistic sampling. The goal is clear. For certain computations, achieve significantly lower energy consumption than classic chips, and offer a new path for efficient training and operation of large models and data centers. Startup Extropic is developing its own thermodynamic chips, which instead of classic bits, use so-called probabilistic bits, or pi bits for short. These constantly gently fluctuate between zero and one and influence each other. When you connect a large number of them, they behave like a physical model of the system you want to compute, such as parts of a generative model or a simulation. Extropic is showing its first small-scale chips and simultaneously developing software so developers can work with them as easily as with GPUs today. The goal is to achieve the same or better quality results with orders of magnitude less power. The company recently unveiled a plan for the Extropic Z1 chip, which is expected to contain over a quarter million interconnected probabilistic bits. Such a device would be able to perform complex machine learning tasks and generative modeling with dramatically lower power consumption. The company's website also offers an open source terminal library which simulates the behavior of these chips and allows developers to test new algorithms even before the hardware becomes publicly available. This channel is sponsored by Buddy, your mentor and AI friend. Just go to buddy.fm and try it out for free. What can thermodynamic chips be used for? Their greatest potential lies where today's algorithms already work with probability, such as generating text and images, simulating complex systems, optimizing transport, energy, or financial markets. For these tasks, it's not about every number to the last decimal place, but speed, precision, 
and the ability to explore a vast space of possibilities. This is precisely what a physically random chip can handle much more efficiently than classic architecture. If we move some AI computations to chips designed from the start to utilize natural noise, we can save a lot of electricity. However, it's important to mention the drawbacks. Thermodynamic chips are not, and likely won't be, a replacement for the processor in your laptop. They're more specialized accelerators, useful for specific types of computations, and are currently in the prototype and testing phase. They need their own software ecosystem and tools so developers can easily use them. And because their outputs are based on random processes, it's essential to clearly define how to ensure reliability and control over the outcome. In the future, it's likely that thermodynamic chips will become a key component of a broader ecosystem. Beyond traditional chips, photonic circuits, and perhaps one day even quantum processors, they can form a separate layer that will handle tasks demanding probabilistic computing and generative models. Thermodynamic chips show that the path to better performance doesn't have to lead only through ever smaller transistors, but also through smarter utilization of what's already long been in our circuits. If this idea takes hold, we could be at the beginning of a new era of computing. For more content on future technologies, hit like and subscribe and tell us in the comments what you think about thermodynamic chips. Do you think they have a chance to change the world?